Chapter Twenty Three of the Boy Scouts Through the Big Timber. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Shasta, Oakland, California. The Boy Scouts Through the Big Timber by Herbert Carter. Chapter twenty three the way blocked hurrah exclaimed step hen not in a shout but cautious like as became a scout when danger was near still he was thrilled by the information which this announcement from giraffe contained if there was a fire beyond the chances seemed pretty good that they would soon know the truth with regard to bumpus of course they kept on hoping for the best but almost anything would be preferable to this anxiety that had been gnawing so long at their hearts it had nearly worn them out allan thrust his burning torch into the ground behind a neighboring tree so that its light might no longer blind his eyes when he tried to see the fire giraffe had discovered after all of them had been directed just where to look by the exulting scout whose sharp vision had first located the far-off light it was easily decided that there could be no doubt as to its being a fire and as the trail ran about that way in a general direction of course they were perfectly safe in believing that some or all of those they had been so persistently following would be found alongside that fire the very thought gave them a delicious thrill by another hour then perhaps even less time than that they would likely know the worst and if as several of them secretly feared those two ugly brutes of timber cruisers had dared lay so much as the weight of their heavy hands in anger on bumpus or ventured to kick him around as though he were a slave well something unpleasant was going to happen to them that was positive it's a fire all right announced thad and giraffe breathed easier for he had been entertaining a slight fear lest some of his laurels be snatched away and all of a mile from here ellen remarked i wonder however you discovered it giraffe with all these big trees around there must be just a little opening ahead and you hit on that avenue oh said giraffe as if carelessly though he was undoubtedly secretly pleased with such words of commendation from one who had had such a long experience in the art of woodcraft as the main boy what's the good of having eyes unless you use them that was just dead easy for me you know now the question is what do we want to do what would seem to be our best course thad went on to say i calculate you are referring to the torch business allan remarked yes that's it replied the scoutmaster we've got to decide right now whether to keep on using it for a while longer or stamp on the same and make our way ahead the best way possible but why not keep on with the light asked step hen who was wondering whether in the darkness he might not be so dreadfully unfortunate as to step on another of those fighting snakes and have his left leg put out of commission also which would be a dreadful catastrophe indeed because there's always a chance on one of those sharp timber cruisers would see it bobbing along and would put them on their guard we had one experience in that line you know fellers when they heard us coming and got all ready to receive us i don't like ever to stamp out a fire but if you say the word thad out it goes 
I think, on the whole, remarked the patrol leader, it would be wiser for us to do it. Let's locate that fire by the stars, or any other old way. Now, you can douse the glim, giraffe. Accordingly, the tall scout trampled on the partly burned torch until the very last spark had been extinguished. Hated to do it, but orders is orders, giraffe was heard to mutter. Listen to him, would you, said Steff Han scornfully. He feels that way about all the fires he makes, too. Just hates to put them out. Makes me think of an old aunt I have. She raises chickens, but never has any to eat. Why, she says she might as soon eat a baby as a hen she'd raised, and talked to, and made a pet of. Don't catch me being so old womanish and silly. Now that they were in darkness, it would, of course, make their progress slower, since they had to reckon on all sorts of obstacles. One thing, said Alan, as they started out, I think I can come back to this same place in the morning if we should want to find it again. But what would we want to find it for? Step Hen demanded. Oh, I don't believe we will. But it might happen, you see, that we'd have to take up the trail again from here, Alan explained. You mean, in case we lost the fire or didn't find Bumpus with those two rascals, Giraffe asked. That's it, said the Maine boy. Well, how are you a-going to find this place again? Step Hen went on to inquire. All coons look alike to me, and one part of this big timber strikes me as pretty much the same as the rest, especially when you see it at night time. You wait, and Alan, he'll tell you how, broke in Giraffe confidently. He felt sure from the way Alan spoke that he knew what he was saying, and after seeing how cleverly the main boy had stuck to the trail when the marks were all Greek to himself and Step Hen, the tall scout had come to have a sincere admiration for Alan. Besides, just then it happened that Giraffe was feeling pretty good. He had received a very high compliment from the acting scoutmaster, and that is usually a great victory for any ambitious scout. Why, he almost forgot he was tired to death, and that his injured leg had been paining him furiously. Such an effect can mind have over matter. Oh, said Alan offhand, and in no particular hurry to speak, because they all really needed a little breathing spell before going on. It's generally dead easy to mark most any place in the timber, if only you use your eyes. There's nearly always some odd old stump of a tree standing around that you'd be apt to know again. Sometimes there happens to be a tree with a queer shape that just catches your eye. Once noticed, it's easy to remember the same. And right now, you're meaning that pair of trees that have fallen forward each other till they look like they are a couple of girls going to hug, spoke up Giraffe quickly, eager to show that those boasted eagle eyes of his had been able to see more than just the campfire ahead. Sure thing, Giraffe, and I'm glad you noticed them, because... Two heads are better than one any day, Alan went on to say. Even if one is, but I won't say it, Step Hen chuckled. Guess you better not, snapped Giraffe. But now that we've decided on that little tree test of memory, hadn't we better be going ahead? I'm thinking of our poor chum, Bumpus, and what he may be enduring right now. Yes, declared Thad, we've rested enough, and might just as well be putting our best foot forward. Meaning the right leg, muttered Giraffe. You're wrong. It's the left one with Alan and me, 
and majority rules in our patrol you know chuckled step hen come on boys i've got the bearings pretty well if that star only stays out from behind the clouds that hide the moon thad upon speaking in this strain started with ellen alongside to give counsel and ensure progress along direct lines having had much more experience than the other pair of scouts they were not only able to keep in a fairly direct line with the fire but managed to avoid stumbling over obstacles as well giraffe and step hen proved less fortunate several times they stepped into holes or else tripped over vines and each mishap was accompanied by more or less of a crash as well as much grumbling from the unfortunate one and perhaps chuckling from the other this would never do in the wide world either they must slow up still more so as to give the stumblers a chance to pick their way more carefully or else those better able to move along without trouble would have to take giraffe and step hen in tow it was decided that the latter method would be better all things considered and so thad convoyed giraffe while allan slipped a hand through the right arm of step hen case of the blind leading the blind i guess muttered the latter grimly because we've both got a game right leg don't talk any more than you have to step hen cautioned the other so they moved along for some time at any rate it seemed to go better now the stumbles were fewer and of less consequence and naturally as the two who lacked experience in this sort of thing became more and more proficient their confidence arose accordingly now and then they were able to discover the beacon light that was drawing them along and in this particular the really sharp eyes of giraffe proved of great help several times he was able to direct thad's attention to the light when even the scoutmaster had failed to discover it but all this while their progress seemed to continue in such a direct forward line that both giraffe and step hen were amazed they could not understand how it was done with all those trees and other obstacles to avoid some boys seem to be natural born woodsmen it comes easy to such to adapt themselves to circumstances and learn all sorts of new wrinkles connected with woodcraft with others it is a hard task though determination to succeed is the main thing before that will power few obstacles can stand it was while the four scouts were making fair progress through the timber in this manner that they suddenly ran up against another serious obstacle and one that for a time threatened to upset all their calculations allan suddenly gave a low bark of a fox quickly repeated twice it brought the boys to a sudden standstill for they recognized the signal of danger the way was blocked end of chapter twenty three